Hey, what's up guys? Smartphones are really trying to up their camera game this year. Case in point, the Nokia 9 PureView. It comes with six cameras on the back. But how do these perform? And besides the cameras, is this any good as an actual phone? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and this is a review of the Nokia 9 PureView. The Nokia 9 PureView is a limited edition phone. They won't be making a ton of these. If it's successful, we may see in the future a more mainstream product based on it. The front and back are made of Gorilla Glass 5, and the frame is 6000 series aluminum. Overall, the phone seems pretty solid and durable. The frame has sharp edges, which together with the side buttons are highlighted in chrome, a nice accent which we've seen before from Nokia. The curved, tapered back has a glossy, mirror-like finish. It's nice looking, though the real interesting feature here is the PureView's extensive camera setup arranged in a flower shape. I was surprised to find that there's no camera bump at all though. This phone will sit perfectly usable on a desk. With this curved design, the Nokia 9 sits quite comfortably in the hand, and feels nice to the touch. And with an IP67 rating, you don't have to worry about water getting in and causing damage. Taking a look at the screen, it's a 5.99 inch P-OLED display with a Quad HD resolution, that's 2880 by 1440. It's tall too, with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. The Nokia 9 doesn't really follow the bezel-less trend, and the forehead is rather thick, but at least you don't have to worry about a notch or hole punch cutout eating into your content. At 538 ppi, images look quite sharp on this screen, and you get deep blacks typical of an AMOLED. Colors are decently accurate too. As with other OLEDs, we do see slight color shift when tilting this display, but it's not as much as in previous generations. The screen is really bright. 530 nits in manual mode and up to 727 nits in auto mode in bright conditions. Legibility outdoors in the sun is great. As you'd expect from an OLED screen, you have an always on display option, so you can see time and notifications without waking up the phone. For audio, the Nokia 9 PureView has a single bottom firing loudspeaker. It scored very good in our loudness tests, but audio quality is rather poor, lacking in both highs and lows. We've heard cheaper phones sound a lot better. If you want to plug in headphones, you'll have to go into the USB-C port with a dongle. There's no headphone jack. Sound is good when you're plugged in though. Very loud and with very good accuracy. The PureView features the first under-display fingerprint reader from Nokia, and unfortunately, there's not much good to say about it. It sits a bit high up on the screen, and it's quite slow to enroll. Once you do get it enrolled, it's pretty unresponsive and slow, often taking a few seconds to unlock the phone. You can't even enroll more than one of the same fingerprint to try to improve the accuracy. You just get a message saying, nope, you've already done that. If you want to avoid these frustrations, you can stick to using face unlock. It isn't the most secure though, so if that's a concern, you'll just have to use your pin. You have 128 gigs of onboard storage. It isn't tiny, but you can't expand it through microSD, and since photos in RAW format take up a lot of space, this will fill up faster than you'd think. Like many of Nokia's phones, the PureView comes as part of the Android One program, so you know it'll get quick and timely updates. The home screen is what you'd expect from stock Android. Swiping up from the bottom opens the app drawer, and swiping down from the top opens the notification shade. Going to the left opens a newsfeed, based on your preferences. There aren't really any proprietary apps here besides the camera. Most of the functions are provided through Google's App Suite. For example, Google Photos is used as your gallery by default, and it even lends further support by saving depth data from your bokeh shots and displaying raw photos. Navigation is done through Google's pill setup. Swipe up on the pill to open the task switcher. Press the arrow key to go back. Swipe on the pill to switch apps, and tap the pill to go home. Holding it down pulls up Google Assistant. The Nokia 9 is powered by last year's Snapdragon 845 chipset, along with 6 gigs of RAM. Nokia probably needed to use a last-gen processor because of the production time revolving around the cameras. Performance here is still great though, on par with the 2018 flagships running the same chip, but it isn't cutting edge anymore. The Nokia 9 PureView has a 3300 mAh battery, and battery life is decent, but not outstanding. It scored an endurance rating of 79 hours in our proprietary tests. Charging speed isn't bad either. With the bundled 18 watt charger, we were able to get from 0 to 50% in half an hour. There's support for wireless charging too. You have to place the phone in just the right spot for it to start charging. Now onto the main attraction, the Nokia 9 PureView's 6 camera setup. 
there are five 12 megapixel cameras, all sitting behind an f1.8 size lens. Two are RGB and three are monochrome. The sixth camera is a TOF one for depth information, and the seventh spot is taken by the LED flash. You don't get any telephoto or ultra-wide action here, but the phone combines the five cameras' images to produce one single photo that's supposed to have spectacular dynamic range. However, you don't see any of that in the viewfinder. It's only after the phone has processed the shot that you can even check out what you're getting. It's slow, and during the processing, the phone is heating up and using a lot of battery. Shooting in JPEG plus RAW is even slower since you have to save a larger file. I had a lot of problems with the camera app too. There are plenty of options available, but it feels overall slow and clunky. It even crashed on me plenty of times too. But is the quality worth it? Well, let's first look at what you get from the camera's automatic processing. These haven't been edited in any way. The pictures come out really over sharpened, but they have accurate colors and good contrast. The dynamic range is great, but not the best we've seen. To get the best out of the cameras, Nokia recommends that you shoot in RAW format and edit these photos in post-processing through Adobe Lightroom. Let's look at what you get if you use the RAW files in Lightroom, and without editing, just hit Auto and then Save. The images have better detail, contrast, and colors, but they turn out a bit soft. But if you go all in with the editing, taking the time to make tonal adjustments as well as sharpness and detail in Lightroom, the photos you end up with are much better, with top-notch detail, natural-looking processing, and excellent colors and contrast. The dynamic range is again great, but still not stellar. And it's too bad that they couldn't have made all this processing automatic. In portrait mode, the Nokia 9 only uses two cameras of the six, one of the RGB cams and the TOF camera. The results are great. Subject separation is among the best we've seen. Detail is excellent, and the defocus backgrounds look nice. You can change the focus point and the blur level later through Google Photos. In low light, the Nokia 9 isn't really a match for other current flagships. It lacks a night mode, and the default JPEG output is noisy, with oversharpening and blown highlights. The level of detail leaves more to be desired, too. Your only option to get good results is through editing the raw file in Lightroom. With enough patience, you can get a much better photo, but it'll still be noisy. For selfies, the Nokia 9 has a 20 megapixel front-facing cam with an f2.0 size lens. There's no autofocus, but it still does a very good job. Dynamic range is excellent for a selfie shooter, colors are good, and there's plenty of detail. For shooting videos, the Nokia 9 only uses one of its many cameras, one of the RGB ones. The maximum output is 4K at 30fps, but there's no stabilization in 4K. EIS is only available in 1080p. 4K video quality is only average. The resolved detail is enough, but barely competitive. The picture is soft as well. At least the dynamic range is wide, and you have great sound capture available through Ozo technology. So that's the Nokia 9 Peer View. You get a flagship quality build, a great OLED display, and though it isn't cutting edge, a fast chipset. But despite all of that, to be honest, the overall package was a disappointment, starting with the software, which is pretty buggy. The fingerprint reader barely works, and the camera interface crashes a lot, though these may be addressed in future software updates. Now what's even more important is that for a phone with so many rear cameras, the default output is nothing too impressive. Now you can get some great results if you run the raw files through Lightroom, but you have to put in the time and the effort. And before you even get to the editing part, just trying to use the camera itself can be really slow and frustrating, especially when you enable the raw capture. For 700 bucks, you might say that this phone is a deal over more expensive flagships, but as far as quality of life goes, I don't think the savings are really worth it. If you're used to editing all of your photos and have some patience, you might get something out of the Nokia 9 Pure View, but everyone else should probably pass on this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.